Sofonisba Nguasala was the first woman painter ever to achieve international fame and the first female painter who was not the daughter of an artist. She received praise from male painters such as Michelangelo, Vasari, and Van Dyck. Sophonisba was even called to the court of King Philip II, where she served as court painter for over 10 years. Sophonisba's birth date was unrecorded and has been the subject of scholarly debate over 100 years. Her approximate year of birth is between 1532 and 1535. Sophonisba was the eldest of seven children, six girls and one boy. During a time when the education of women was not encouraged, Mr. Anguinsola ensured that all six of his daughters received a proper education. Whatever the motive, Sophonista's father set a precedent when he sent his two oldest daughters to study under Bernardino Campy. Sophonisba was 14 at the time. A few years later, Sophonisba painted an intriguing self-portrait of her teacher painting her. Sophonisba has Campy look out of the painting at us. In this context, we become Sophonisba herself, the active maker of this painting. Sophonisba thus plays both the role of the subject and object, the viewer and the viewed in this painting. After the three-year apprenticeship, Sophonisba taught her younger sisters to paint. During this time, Sophonisba's fame spread in her hometown, resulting in many noblemen and leading ladies commissioning her talents to complete portraits for them. As her reputation and notoriety grew, so did the demand for self-portraits, of which she produced more than any other artist. It is believed that her father also used these self-portraits to advertise Sophonista's talents. Sophonista illustrated herself as a woman of virtue by identifying herself in a number of paintings as Virgo. During the Renaissance era, female virtue was understood to include obedience, modesty, and silence. Her demeanor and simple dress, usually a near black jacket with a white lace collar, conformed to these aspects of virtue. The self-portraits also show her proficiency in letters, music, and painting. A self-portrait in which Sophonisba holds a small book with the inscription Sophonisba Aguasala made this herself in 1554. The small size of the book suggests a devotional book or a book of love sonnets. Either would have been appropriate reading for a woman of her station. Her chastity and obedience is attested to by the appearance of the governess in one of her portraits. Sophonisba depicts herself painting an image of the Madonna and Child besides attesting to her skills as an accomplished painter. This painting also suggests her devotion. It is significant to note that the religious paintings she produced are not narrative representations, but rather devotional images. Simply stated, she painted religious themes because of her piety not because she was commissioned to do so. So Vanispa's father sent Michelangelo a drawing of a laughing girl. Michelangelo was impressed, but he challenged her to depict 
the opposite emotion, which was more difficult. In response, Sophonisba sent a drawing, boy pinched by a crawfish. Sophonisba's father sent letters to Michelangelo acknowledging the attention Michelangelo paid to Sophonisba. He gave reports of her progress, and he thanked Michelangelo for his advice and praise of Sophonisba's work. Sophonisba's Masterwork, an intimate conversation piece entitled The Chess Game, introduced naturalism to the traditionally stiff home scenarios that were produced by her contemporaries. The painting shows her sisters in a competitive mode playing chess, which was popular among nobles since the early Renaissance. Because chess requires logic and strategy, it characterizes the girls as well-educated and exposed to pastimes, usually reserved for boys. Sofa Mispa obviously admired her sisters for their spirit and displayed them as active, good-natured, and intellectual. During her 20s, Sofa Nispa was called to court as a lady-in-waiting and court painter by King Philip II, Europe's most powerful king. While at court, she tutored the queen and her two daughters in art, along with painting portraits for the royal family. An engraving of a now-lost painting documents her status as a member of court. She wears chains, which were probably given to her by the king. Her pearl embroidered dress stands in contrast to the simpler dress of her earlier self-portraits. This dress is possibly one given to her by the queen. Sophonisba still produced self-portraits illustrating her in simpler dress. A miniature self-portrait, perhaps made as a gift for a princely patron, depicts her holding a shield monogrammed with her father's name. An inscription around the monogram attests to her virtue by explicitly identifying her as a virgin. The inscription also states that Sophonisba had made this image by her own hand from a mirror. Queen Isabel's father, Pope Pius IV, hearing of Sophonisba's talent, requested a portrait of his daughter. Upon receiving the portrait, the Pope sent back expensive gifts along with a letter praising Sophonisba's talent. Throughout the 14 years Sophonisba remained in the royal court, she was admired by all. King Philip arranged Sophonisba's marriage to a Sicilian nobleman. She received gifts and a dowry from their royal family. This small fortune enabled her to continue working and tutoring would-be painters. Also, these funds supported her family, which included her brother, after their father's death. Sophonisba's marriage lasted for approximately eight years. It ended with her husband's passing. King Philip tried to persuade Sophonisba to stay in Spain. However, she was determined to return home. During her voyage home, she fell in love with the captain of the ship. They were married at port where they remained. Sophonisba stayed active artistically. She welcomed many artists into her home and parlor, whom she advised on techniques. Sophonisba produced paintings well into her 80s until her eyesight dimmed. Upon Sophonisba's passing, her adoring second husband described her as small of frame, yet great among mortals. While Sophonisba was regarded as somewhat a wonder in her own time, she was largely forgotten by later generations. 
This brilliant artist encouraged the instruction of other girls in the arts and paved the way for women in a male-dominated field. So Fenispa and Gonzala should be regarded as a formidable influence not only in the world of art, but also helping to establish the equality of women.